is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, it's Bran, and I love Lifetime Christmas movies. Hi, it's Dan, and I despise Lifetime Christmas movies. Hey, it's Alonzo, and Lifetime Christmas movies are just always a big ball of surprises. And, and this, this is, is the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. podcast. Yeah, 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 la, yeah, yeah, la, yeah. La, la, la. Hi, everybody. Another oh. Monday. You know, sometimes you get in the doldrums when Christmas in July is over. Like, you got to go back to August, September. It's yeah, 98 we're, degrees We're getting outside. back to summer movies yeah, and, on Hallmark uh, tomorrow. It's tough for you to do that. Yeah. Even though August is my birthday month, and I know you've planned something big. big. I don't want to. Big. And it's August 7th, so it's right around the corner, right? We're big so, birthday boys. We big, love, huge we birthday boys. Um, so you, but we, we are trying to keep that Christmas spirit going. Here. Yes. Right? Yes, we are. And that's important to you. It is important to me. It's going to make me feel better. I, I was uh, taken aback by... The fact that Hallmark uh, t- uh, tomorrow is coming. We have our first summer movie, uh, part two, summer part two. And when <laughs> you, when you two. combine the two summers, it's going to be nine summer movies, Man. which is the longest season. Uh, has well, they hol- used to do the June weddings. The June weddings. And then Christmas in July, then Summer of Love in August. And now that they got rid of the June weddings. It's just a bunch of summer nights fighting. Just summer nights, hodgepodge, beluga. Zing, zing. Just one after another, yes. just coming at you. It's a mess. It's a mess. I think it says something about the state of marriage in this country. That's that right. Hallmark is yeah. like, you know what? Yeah. More surfing. We can't We can't do it any longer, That's guys. Exactly uh, right. but, but also... <laughs> It, to be fair, I think Hallmark's just listening to its constituents. Everyone's been clamoring for more summer movies. Absolutely. Like, that's what they want. When they tune into Hallmark, they're like, I love Hallmark, but if only there were more summer movies, that's when I really tune in. Well, we got Fall Harvest kicking off on September 11th. Mm. So I think that's... And there's that's, a new, new Heinze coming. That's the, it's on September 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's the, big, it's the big kickoff to fall. There you it's have Tyler it. Tyler Hines. And who can blame them? Yeah. But we want to make as good a use as of the lifetime summer of Santa's on the Philo as we can. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You don't come up with a name like Summer of Santa's. Oh my gosh. And uh, Did not that get a second it. pass? Or was somebody's like, We could do Summer of Santa's <laughs> and everybody's true. like, Okay, that's fine. Let's what just. what's another we got you got Christmas in July, that's taken. You can't do that. So what do we well, got? Well Christmas in July isn't pa- like patented. You can't do it though. If you're a lifetime, you can't do it. Like Hallmark it's already a Hallmark's thing. But I mean it. Christmas in July was around before Hallmark. Was, I understand right? that, Dan, but you can't like they've made it a thing. Well, I'm sure there's they, something better they, than the Summer of Santas. That's what I'm asking, Dan. What would you call it? <laughs> I don't you know. Keep saying it, but you're not giving anything. I'm not. It's not my job to Make give it your anything. job right no. now. What would you call it? I don't have to give anything. It's just Summer of Santas is bad. So, summer of Santas is an underrated Spike Lee movie. I'm just gonna say. That. <laughs> um, how about how about Brandon? Um, get that joke, but I. I got no, it. Don't worry. Not. Thank you. How about <laughs> let it let it glow? Let it glow. Because it's sunny. It's hot. Summer of Saints is looking better already, huh? I mean, yeah. How, yeah, about, yeah. Um, how about how about how about Yule in Jewel? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's terrible. I don't hate it. Yule uh, in Jewel. I. These are all. Are you going to come lie. up with anyone? That's it. You lie. You lie. You lie. <laughs> you, lie. <laughs> you lie. All right, Joe, settle down back there. <laughs> you lie. That's, true. That, that's been ruined. You're right. <laughs> that's right. You can't use that either. Yeah. He took it. Nope. No. Nope. You stole fizzy lifting drink. <laughs> um, do you have anything? No. No, I don't have anything. It's not my job. I'm not saying it's your job. I'm just saying if you're going to give them a hard time, at least be summer helpful. Of Santa, all the movies don't even have Santa in it. But it's the summer of Santa's. Why? Or do all the just because there's multiple Santas? There is a Santa. There might a be Santa a Santa in, in every, every movie. movie. Is that well, like any somebody playing Santa? Just Claus. somebody putting it on the outfit. Yeah. yeah. Boy, I don't know. The, and Christmas the, set up. They dress. He dresses up as Santa, and they you know the Philly Snavy Dad. Yes. Is there one in Philly? Yeah, there is. Yep. Oh, there wel- is. A Welcome Home Christmas? There is. It's a great title, wow, Lifetime. Dan, I don't know like what you want from me. It's a great of title. Santa. It's a great title. It's a great title. Santa. But I think I think the, the winning Santa is in today's movie. Oh, we, we are oh, going to get to boy, that. Let's howdy. get to it right now. It's a Welcome Home Christmas. It originally aired on November 7th, 2020, and it went a little something like 
this. Meet Chloe. She volunteers at a homeless shelter. She runs the army toy drive. She's a big sister to a kid whose parents are overseas. She does it all. And uh, that's just all the volunteer stuff she does. Her actual job is to counsel veterans who are trying to get back into civilian life. She starts to work with a vet named Michael. Michael stands her up for his first counseling session. And so uh, she goes to his remote cabin because she's very committed to her job. He's chopping wood naturally. And Michael tells Chloe, listen, I just want to be left alone. Hence the remote cabin in the woods. Uh, But the next day he shows up at a coffee shop and says, hey, I actually do need some help. Chloe's mother and sister Trish, ignoring the signs that he needs help. uh, And they just say, hey, he's really hot. Um, She realizes Michael ran a toy drive for kids at an army base. And so she's like, what if we did that here? And so they go around and they start raising money for the toy drive. Drive. They even get a kid, the the the, the kid who uh, she's a big sister for, so that it's harder for kid people to say no to giving money. Um, they keep hanging out. They're doing all these Christmassy things like hot cocoa and singing Silent Night at a karaoke Italian restaurant combo. Her uh, boss tries to uh, take uh, take her off Michael's case. You spend too much time. You're all in on this. Let's let's keep doing things. He's got to start doing stuff on his own. Um, but you can't keep a good love story down. That's what I've always said. Um, And they start to keep working together to get this toy drive ready. It's the day of the big toy drive. And we've got bad news. Uh, Lifetime needed more Summer of Santas. There's no more Santas left. They used them all. (laughs) They used them all. What are we going to do? Well, here's the good news. The real Santa (laughs) shows up. I don't, we don't, I mean, I can't say with certainty but I, I feel think like with 99% uh, 99% certainty, percent certainty yeah. that this is the real Santa. He shows up. Obviously, when you have the real Santa on your team, the toy drive is a success. We see uh, the troops of the little girl come home. Big happy times. Michael and Chloe kiss. Big happy times. And now it's time for the end of the movie. You think it's just going to be all, all done now. It's uh, kissings and fun times. But no, it's not. <laughs> Um, Earlier on in the movie, Chloe thought that Michael was in love with a a girl. And he was a girl dog. Uh, he loved the dog that he uh, he trained. He was in the the uh, in the uh, what's it, what do you call it? Combat co- combat dog. Yes. He loved his combat dog. Obviously, once he went back, they had to separate. But the dog is now uh, retired, and so they reunite the dog with Michael. Big happy times. They kiss some more, and by them I mean Michael and Chloe. And that, my friends, was welcome, welcome home Christmas. Christmas. We did it. I do want to make one. Correction, you caught me off guard. It's just a military service dog. It's not a combat dog. It's not a Uh, combat canine? We did see Combat Dog Live, uh, and they were (laughs) phenomenal. Is it not called a combat canine? It's no, it's called a military service animal, is what it's called. Well, in 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 a veteran's Christmas, I believe it was called a search and rescue dog. Yeah, search and rescue dog. I'm gonna look up right now. Combat canine. Combat canine. This is good. Watch that. Watch this. Combat canine. Uh, uh, there is a of uh, some articles about yeah. it. Yeah. Combat Canine uh, National Geographic photo of the day. Yeah. All right. Good. So glad we did that. It's not not a thing. Yeah. Let's <laughs> take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back, and we'll talk about this movie here in Deck the Homer. Philo has the lifetime. They have the homework. They're doing all the wonderful things that you could want for made for TV movies. They got MTV, VH1, Nickelodeon, all the channels you could want for anybody in your house, regardless of what your preferences are uh, when it comes to TV. Philo's got you covered. And here's the good news. Philo's giving you 25% off two months. That's exactly right. 25% off two months. (laughs) Philo.tv slash DTH. Get it today. Hey, I uh, feel like... (laughs) It's time for the hot takes where we share how we felt about this movie. <laughs> a, welcome home Christmas. Uh, I'm going to start with Alonzo. Alonzo, what did you think about this one? Oh, well, this has one of uh, what I know is one of Daniel's favorite tropes ever. Oh. Uh, I hate to steal it from him. And it's the the don't make me sing scene. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. I know you love a don't make me oh. sing. No. Oh, oh, I, I couldn't. Don't no, make me what? sing. Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. Um, you know, this movie is, 
I, look, I'll tell you, for one thing, certainly after the last few examples of COVID movies that we've seen, I think does a much better job of like filling in the spaces and not making it seem like they're in the middle of a ghost town. Like there are some, you know, the, 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 there's enough background to kind of not make it feel like it's completely isolated. Um, I love a real Santa twist. I'm a sucker mm -hmm. for that. Okay, <laughs> man. The, the troops and real Santa, Hallmark would never. And a dog. And a dog. And a dog. And a dog. Hallmark so, wishes. Uh, yeah, they would They would not in a million years. So that that all felt kind of bold. Uh, I, you know, I think the, the, the main couple has chemistry. I don't entirely buy her as a veteran. Um, and I think there are other issues about her character that we can get to in the way. What's? Um, but, you know, it's it's fine it's this is median I, level like okay sure I'll i will say i expected a lot out of the hot take what i didn't expect is any of us doubting whether or not someone served our country i don't think yeah i don't think didn't you did her. Well, well okay no, i've no, got no, more I, no i've got more thoughts on that go ahead no 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 i want you to give your hot take because I, you were glowing when real santa showed of up of course like i was of course i was because i'm not a monster real santa uh is fan i i love it anytime it happens i love it it's it's great and i love the way i i just i love that after you know he goes off into the alley and you see the shadow of him like disappearing or whatever he flies away whatever and they just look at each other like oh well that that explains there it is. that i mean <laughs> done and done well, that explains you saw that sparkle it. that explains it yeah. um so yes, obviously I love that. What I don't love is most of the rest of this movie. Uh, I don't love. I don't know, man. It is really, uh, I don't know what it says about me as an American, but it's tough for me to love these troops movies. It just kind of like bums me out overall. Um, and like, I love a good troop homecoming as much as the next one. Like YouTube compilation. YouTube videos where YouTube they put a button. <laughs> that's the definition logo. <laughs> uh, I love those. I love it when it's real, but it's just anytime it happens not real, it's just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, nah. so it's just, I don't know. It just didn't work for me overall, but real Santa comes into town and makes everything better. So that's good. Gosh, this movie's <laughs> awful. I, I, I mean, <laughs> awful. Uh, first of all, and I mean this in all sincerity. We have a lot of fun here on Deck the Hallmark, <laughs> uh, um, but we don't joke about the troops. We love the troops. Both of my grandfathers were troops. We think what sacrifice and service are important. However, when Lifetime decides to crap on the troops, there's nothing I can do about that because <laughs> they have less regard for the troops than I do for mowing my grass. Like they literally talk, talk about PTSD like it's nothing in this movie. In fact, she's supposed to be a, a psychologist or psychiatrist like a and has a patient that she's falling in love with and her mom and sister are just like, PTS, dang, he's fine. <laughs> like, they don't care at all. These are the troops, people. They're the troops. And do you know what they do to try to make it better? I've been slaughtered with the Christmas stick. We have homecomings. We have real Santa. We have a dog. It's absurd. And then here's the absolute crap sprinkles on top of this Sunday. Everyone is scalding, burning up hot in this movie. They're sweating. <laughs> they live in a town. They live in a town made of cotton and they're sweating. <laughs> like it's not even like there's just giant tumbleweeds of cotton and everyone is in four layers sweating. The movie was filmed in Nashville, Tennessee. And it, no one is comfortable. Everyone is hot. It's clearly the summer. They don't care about the troops, and they give us a troop homecoming and a dog. I. It is all time bad for me. All time bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not a great movie. But real I Santa. I spent summer in Nashville. It is uh, you, one layer is too many. One layer is too many. That's right. These poor folks. We need a, a Western Bulldogs uni at that oh, point. Oh boy. <laughs> Go doggies. Go doggies. Um, <laughs> Chris Hemsworth on the line? No? No, not this time. Hey, Chris Hemsworth, another part owner of the doggies along Zoom, with us. Zoom so. call. Zoom oh, owners call later. You all have so much in common. That's right. <laughs> um, let's get to all the feels. Did we get any feels from this one, um, Alonda? 
Uh, well, let's see. Um, I had Dr. Mike Fields. I don't know if y'all noticed the, uh, the, 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 the troop in this movie is Dr. Mike from Christmas Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses, yep. who's the guy that she should have wound up with yes. in that movie instead of the billionaire. Dr. Mike. So I was glad that he got, he got finally another chance to get the girl. Um, you know, uh, Charlene Tilton and Tim Reed, those like, see, those are my, those are my nostalgia buttons. Like I know for, for y'all like seeing Jana Kramer is like, Oh yeah. From one tree Hill. Like I, that's not my nostalgia. <laughs> my nostalgia is Frank's place and WKRP in Cincinnati and Dallas. And so like for the, those, those were nice. Um, I thought the young girl was pretty good for this mm -hmm. kind of movie. Like yeah. that could have gotten unctuous, especially the scene where she sort of pours it on to guilt the, <laughs> you know, uh, store owner into contributing to the Operation Santa Claus fund. But I liked her. Uh, I like the fact that at one point they give her a mug of cocoa that is filled all the way to the top and covered in marshmallows That's right. and not an empty cup. That never happens in these movies. Um, clear, glass, is, clear glass full mug can't lose. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is Throw weirdly the plot of A Charlie Brown Christmas in that yeah. a therapist takes somebody who <laughs> needs to commit themselves to an activity for Christmas, finds one for him to do. Uh, so that I thought was kind of funny, whether they intended to be or not. And the, the, the thing with the red bloom flower, I thought was very funny and very, it caught me off guard. <laughs> Where he, where he uh, says, ha ha, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Yes, that's a funny bit. Like, because it, it's the kind of thing in one of these movies where, yes, there would be this complication that, you know, like, we can't move this tree because my wife and I planted it. Yeah, da, da, da. And for him to, like, turn around, like, no, 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 just kidding. I I, I, I thought that part worked. So there were a little things along the way. And, and, and of course, real Santa. Yes, of course, real Santa. Of course, real Santa. <laughs> Man, I hated everything about all the stuff he just I, said. Aside from the little girl who I thought was actually pretty good. Yes. Oh, so my that. my feels is also a uh, little girl related uh, for this movie. So don't look at me that way. Don't look. I know it was a bad way to word it. Um, the it's the film scene with the with the mug and the and the marshmallows. I love that scene, yeah. and I thought she was really funny in that scene because she's picking them off and she's eating them like she's really pondering life. Um, and I just she thought it was very funny. Cagey. They they want her. They want her help, and she's like, mm, I don't know. I don't like, know. What, do you, what, what can you tell me? me? I thought it was very funny, and then at the end, she she just takes a drink, and marshmallows are all. It was, it was great. It was big fun. Uh, maybe nine. Maybe nine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I still um, don't know how that ranking works to be I, honest I, with I, you. Now, I, Alonzo has listened to this since I have, but I'm pretty sure in 2018 in a veteran's Christmas, I had a similar all the feels, which is this. It, these movies are terrible and and they they try to play to some very specific heartstrings that work much better in real life. Having said that, a dog homecoming always works. It always, it, like I don't, it's not fair. I've been manipulated. It's not an earned <laughs> feel but you watch a German Shepherd get excited and 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 give his owner a bunch of kisses. You, you how do you not love that as a dog person? Like I, I'm all in there. I'm all in there. There's nothing I can do about it. Did I know it was coming? Yes. Can I believe they tacked it on to troops coming home and everything else and real Santa? Yeah, I kind of. I can't believe that. But for me, it worked. That's the, that's all. The only feels I have though. That's it. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm Thanks, proud man. Of you for still <laughs> There's a great YouTube compilish of uh, yeah. dogs coming home. Too. Those YouTube compilishes. Delicious compilish makes them boys go loco. <laughs> the dogs are coming home, and then the Santa says ho ho ho. <laughs> 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 we'll take a quick break. We'll be right here. Later. Hello, welcome back. We're talking about uh, a welcome home mm -hmm. Christmas, and it's time for the Wait What. It's part of the show we talk about. One in this movie made us go away. What? I'll start with you, Alonzo. So, yeah, to, to piggy piggyback on, on what Dan said, the first thing I wrote down was, is this a movie about a therapist who starts a relationship <laughs> with her client? Because that's, no, yeah. let's not do that. Yeah. You know? Not even in uh, the Army can you do that. No, no, no. <laughs> now, let me be clear about my thing about whether or not I buy her as a veteran, because I, 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 don't, I don't want to sound glib about this. Going back to Veterans Christmas, which we've now cited twice in this episode. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, I'm making a hat trick. Um, you know, uh, 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 Eloise Mumford in that movie has a bearing about her. And granted, she's playing somebody who's like just out of the military. Yeah. Like this, this character has been out for like a year. But she has a way of standing. She has a way of speaking that feels like somebody who has just gotten out of 
the service, you know, where like you are expected to stand at attention, where like communication is very kind of direct and, you know, you, 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 you meet people in life who have, uh, have been in the service and there's a certain way that they communicate, especially when they're talking to maybe that general is no longer her superior officer, but as her former superior officer, like she would be very, I don't know. There's just, there were things about it that I was like, she seems a little freewheeling for me. I never bought. It like, felt like attack on to me. It felt like adding her as being in the service because the whole family was felt like an added part to this movie that was just like, yeah, let's make her uh, in the service. Yeah, too. I don't think they, they committed to that enough. She, I think like, like, I don't think she went to the, 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 the thing where they teach you, you know, where they teach actors, like how, a, how a soldier would stand and how a soldier would do whatever, you know, like it didn't, I didn't buy that off of yeah. her. So that, that, that's just yeah. you know whatever um no one ever seems to or, or they they kind of skirt around it a bit but like for somebody whose entire job is to sort of like help veterans adjust to life back home and and like you know figure out a new way to live and a new way to find friends and blah 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 nobody ever talks about the fact that her coping mechanism is to basically give herself zero free time that's right <laughs> yep yeah. All she does is volunteer work 24-7, like from the moment she wakes, like at 6 a.m., she's, you know, putting salt and pepper on the breakfast potatoes at the homeless shelter to, you know, going off and doing the toy drive and the whatever else. And it's like, all that's great and all that is admirable, but like from a therapeutic point of view, I think like you need some downtime lady. Like you need a long bath with some candles and some, you know, some, some relaxing music or something. Like I, I think but that when PTSD is the equivalent of a paper cut, your therapist is, is probably going to have the issues that she has. Yeah. I said, yeah, they, like you said, they, they, they treat the whole thing very glibly, but that just to me seemed like her, her incessant volunteering felt it feels like a feels pathological by the end of the movie you know when so she that, smiles and goes i will make time I, we're supposed to feel like she's just a hero but i was just like oh man i know well oh. there goes my two hours of sleep I that's guess I'm right not doing yeah. that now so you know <laughs> um when they they start going to you know pass the hat for operation santa claus and people are like oh, it's always the same story we've already donated to other causes Mind you, in that later in that scene, it is established that it is December eighteenth. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It is People the same have story. already donated yeah. at that point, so yeah. like that's you should not be shocked. You need to, to find that. the big businesses looking to avoid tax evasion and fraud. <laughs> exactly. That's and a, years years yeah. running out. December eighteenth. You, you got yeah. The the people in the last two weeks who whose accountants have just come and said we got to find somewhere to get rid of a hundred grand right now. That's where you need to <laughs> yeah. be looking right now. Exactly. Fiscal <laughs> is tick tick no. tick. That's right. And you know, you need, you need more yep. than 72 hours. That's right. Um, and then finally, like, okay, she's the best, you know, therapist, uh, counselor, whatever they have. And she has one client at a time. Yeah. Because like yeah. she, she devotes her entire day that she's not doing all the other stuff that she does to this guy. To, and I'm like, to courting him. Yes. Well, the, that's a yes. But still, it's like, uh, what kind of workload do you have here? This is your paying full time gig, as they keep saying, that you have one client at a time. That's right. Yeah. The best yeah. of the best right. of the best. That's it. <laughs> at the beginning of this movie, she gets applauded for seasoning potatoes, and I found that to be an interesting <laughs> yeah, start of. We <laughs> kicked that movie off with a bang. She's like, wait, oh, yeah. wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, I knocked my microphone. It, and oh, was, and now it's really coming. Now it's I'm not gonna, just oh, gonna, we're good. I'm going to mute you while you uh, make sure you, you get it. Well, I mean, look, later she does. Oh, you know what? No, actually, it's a different movie. Never mind. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> It's I almost watch like we watch they, more than one of these blur together. Yeah, <laughs> oh, never mind. Scratch um, that. <laughs> I, I would say that this movie is maybe top five, potentially top three, and even potentially the worst snow I've ever yes. seen. Yes, <laughs> it's number one. Brain. It's, it's number I, I one. I mean, I'd have to give it a no lot. No question. I, that. I gotta give yeah, it. the wads on the lawn at the base are uh, really it's, embarrassing. It's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen, truly. It looks like somebody <laughs> took a bunch of pillows and just took a chainsaw to him and just <laughs> said, well, okay, this looks good. We're fine. But the, the clumps are gigantic yeah. and you can see the wind blowing yeah. them. <laughs> like you can see that it's not like it yeah. is the worst I've it's, ever seen. But I, I will say this, like I just could, 
I started noticing the snow after I noticed the literal sweat on the leads' faces yeah. <laughs> just talking to each other. But there's a reason why they use like the white blankets or you yes. know, when it's a little bit colder, you can you know get like actual ice or something. Like, because if it's just a big circle of puff, it's the, that's not any like what is what was it? And then they, they wouldn't they aren't even doing the fire extinguisher foam though. They're no. doing like you said, just like it's cotton just cotton yeah. or something. That's all it is. And I loved it when they walked into one of the buildings it looked like somebody had taken um i don't know like white spray paint and just spray painted the front of the windows to make it look frosty but it's like not front <laughs> yeah uh, when they go when they go into the woods to chop the tree down one of the trees has gotten that <laughs> that that spray paint it's, it's wild it's the, it's the worst i think it's christmas camp i think if i've seen snow uh, i think it's the worst i've uh, i've seen this is I number one for me it's not even close um i i he walks in and maybe i'm maybe i there's reasons for why he has his information but they're going around and they're asking for money and um this lady at a toy store she's like no we don't you know we've already given or whatever and he's like well why is it then that you're only giving less than one percent and then he pulls out graphs of their budget <laughs> yeah but why does he have that information he's i mean nonprofits have to but that's a toy store to I, I, I'm getting there. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Nonprofits have to file their tax returns with like, you know, the, the city and stuff and they are publicly accessible. But yeah, this toy store would not be unless uh, there's some shady accounting going on. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, Maybe I, they need to get rid of that money. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They got to get rid yeah. of that. They got to get rid of that. They got to get rid of that money. Uh, that's all I got. Dan. Um, yeah. Can we talk about the uh, all black font on pink paper flyer for the Christmas toy drive? <laughs> That looks great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, they couldn't have made it less festive if they tried. <laughs> if somebody was like, take all the Christmas out of this, aside from Operation Santa Claus, they couldn't have done a better job than hot pink with mm. black font. That's what we got. It's literally, they clearly didn't have a color printer on set. They used pink paper. <laughs> they ran it through a black and white printer, and that's what we got. I still can't believe that that's a thing that happened. And in if this you movie. don't know, if you don't go in knowing what Operation Santa Claus is, you get this flyer. You're like, I, is this, this a band? <laughs> is this a hardcore band? Like yeah. this is this is really yeah. terrifying. Um, the snow or or fake snow is only matched by the lamest uh, light decoration plug-in of all time in this movie. They put up one strand up here and one strand on the bushes, and it's the middle of the day, <laughs> and they plug that sucker in and look in awe at their two strands of light in the daytime. That happens in this movie. Um, I, she says this line, every year the toy drive is such a dull event. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, people. Like every year it's so terrible. We gotta go and give these toys to underprivileged kids. <laughs> God, so I, boy, I, I would a little silent night karaoke. Yeah, you know, let I mean. me tell you, I would love to uh, give toys, but it's boring. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't. If it wasn't <laughs> what's, so in it, what's in it? What's in it for me? Boring. What's the, in it for me? Yeah. There was that one year where they had a live yeah, music. The pastor at your church growing up going, ah, oh, the boring angel trees in the back. <laughs> Grab a card or whatever. That's loser. <laughs> yeah. So then they find out that nobody wants to give him money, and then the male lead comes up with this humdinger. <laughs> well, you know, it's just like the army. Uh, the first thing that happens in every battle is you throw out the first strategy and figure out what's next. <laughs> So in every battle, you have one thing, and you go in, and you're like, okay, nope, chuck it. It's gone. We don't have it anymore. No one's ever successfully strategized for war on the first try is what he's saying here. We plan for um, months, and then when we're done planning, yeah. we say, let's throw it out, and let's get it on the real plan now. Because everyone um, knows the first plan's point. Yes. What's the um, point? It's I, like the first pancake. I, right. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about the fancy Italian karaoke place where they're calling people up and the don't make me sing but the reality is is karaoke is what olive garden deserves right <laughs> like that's like if that's not a match made in heaven i don't know what is right i yeah. would love 
You just if Olive Garden had that looks like a breadstick, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just haunching down on your breadsticks Dude, and salad. If Olive Garden had karaoke, are oh, you man. kidding me? Good gosh, that would be awesome. The only way to make Olive Garden less appealing to me is just just put all the salad in a trough. <laughs> like <laughs> that would be the only way. We all just get our feeding bags on and go up to the salad trough. Um, I I I have seen a lot of these movies and there's a lot of baking hot chocolate something competitions this is by far the worst and most confusing competition that i've ever seen uh first of all it's a hot chocolate competition with five contestants in it now those five contestants all stand a foot away from the judges and that is not a misprint they are standing at the other side of a table and they're leering over the judges as they drink and take notes they can read every word they're saying everyone in this contest gets a prize runner up runner up third second first they all get a prize but the cards are where you lose me there are three judges and the judge on the end the dad from sister sister he uh takes all three cards presumably each of these judges has voted with their card and hands them to the mayor and the mayor proceeds to not look at all three cards to tally the votes she looks at the first card and goes well the two runners up are such and such <laughs> next card third place is next card first place second place is so the only way that makes sense is, is if one judge's job was just to pick the two runners up that's the only way that makes any sense it doesn't make any sense otherwise zero time was put into that at all um but my favorite is the fact that when they sing silent night in the olive garden karaoke <laughs> they've memorized all the harmonies and they've never practiced it it's not no. just memorizing the harmonies like harmonies it's not heart <laughs> the amazing thing about this Silent Night is it's a rendition I've never. He is he's doing he's freestyling over top. He's doing yes. some rounds. He's, he's just got, like he run what if I kind of me. came in after and all, did a little echo echo. It, here's what it was like in in A Star Is Born with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> wait wait wait. Go on go on. Um, these two meet each other at a bar one night and spend the night drinking and they half write a song in the parking lot of a liquor store. And then the next day, Bradley Cooper's character is in, at, playing a concert live. Lady Gaga is washing dishes for her Italian family. And Cooper sends a car to come get her for the concert. Sure. And she's like, oh, my God. And she gets in the car. She flies to the concert. And he brings her up on stage. And then they sing Shallow. And they crush it like they've been practicing for weeks and weeks, even though no time has passed. That is what I felt in this movie to a to a degree. No one, they've just said, Silent Night's my favorite carol, me too. And there's this understood connection, the one with the rounds and the runs and the different verses. And then verses. you're going to come in. And yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that, is, that, is not a, that is not an entirely accurate uh, recounting of what happens in A Star is Born. It is 100% accurate. <laughs> no, she has already written that song, or at least partially written the song, and then he takes it and finishes it. But they've yet to practice it. They've yet to That's practice Never, it. They yes, met no, the not, night before. Not they've not practiced rehearsal, it. No admittedly. time in the studio, any time at all. Brand's a musician. He knows you. Bands, you just show up, you and show you sing up. it all perfectly. You show up, and you do, you do fine, yeah. <laughs> Silent also, she's washing night. dishes in a restaurant. That's right. Oh, she, look, she's at her parents. He's at her dad's house. She's, oh, you know, she's cooking night. for all of her dad's v holy veto night. friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> all is calm. All is calm. All is bright. I want to tell you all is bright. <laughs> <laughs> round your, round your virgin. Oh, man. Go ahead. That's all I got. Good? Yeah. Great. Right. It's time for what the Hallmark is part of the Lifetime. It's the part of the show we talk about what in this Lifetime movie. Uh, we still have questions about that. We would love some answers, too. Alonzo, what are you wondering about? What's keeping you up at night? <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, as thrilled as I am they got together at the end, I'm wondering, like, is he ever going to see her again? <laughs> because <laughs> she's, she's still volunteering for everything on the planet. And, like, presumably, now that he's all cured and ready to go, she's got other clients to move on or other client one at a time to move on to. And when she does, she's going to be spending 24-7 with that guy or lady. So it's like there, there's not a lot of indication here that she's opening her life to him as much as he and the dog are going to watch her continue to have no free time for herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way it should be. Um, <laughs> what? I, I don't know. I, uh, I know why this happened in real life but in this world where he is the real santa claus because he mm. clearly is the real santa claus 
Why does Santa have a southern accent? Oh, because it's Nashville. Stop. I know why it it is the way that it is. It's reassuring, Bran. Why do you have one? I don't. I don't. Why do you have a southern accent? I don't know why you have one. I don't think that I do. Maine, Florida, South Carolina. Do I have a southern accent? I don't know. I'm sure to some people I do. I'm sure to some people I do. Uh, (laughs) But obviously, this movie was filmed in Nashville. This guy who played Santa's never had any other role. This they found this guy. That's why he has a southern accent. But in this world that we are living in here, where it's cold and you know wherever this is, and they get the real Santa to be Santa, why does Santa have a southern accent. It's like that song. Some children see him. Oh, Santa the, appears yes. in the way in the in a, a way, way that, that the people yeah. they can can accept. And so if he's going to appear at a southern army base, then he's going to have a twang. It reminds That's me of beautiful. a scene in A Star Is Born. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, um, yeah, Santa. Be, this is the I looked this Santa up because he is authentic, and this is the only movie he's ever appeared in. So maybe he's Santa Claus. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe Santa's Southern. I, I don't know what to tell you. My other one is uh, Dad, uh, but Doug is what we call him in the movie, or reverse that. She, her boss, who assigns her these people, his name is Doug, but I swear to you, she for the majority of the movie is saying Dad. I rewound it, and Bran agreed with me. She's saying dad in the first scene. I was like, this is her dad. It's a weird way for her dad to talk to her. And then we learned that her dad is deceased. And then the next time it sounds like she's saying dad. It does. I don't know what else to tell you. It's weird. You're not the the IMDb. There's multiple people that brought this up in the uh, review. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm not alone. Maybe this this is part of her untreated issue. That's right. The movie is. She should be dead. Doug, dad, Doug. Doug, Doug, dad, dad. It's daddy, dad, Doug, dad, uh, daddy, dad, Doug. dad, dug up. That's right. You got to dig that up. That's right. Uh, we did it, everybody. Hey. Congratulations. Uh, very excited. Next week, uh, we're going to be talking about a very vintage Christmas. Sister, sister, to keep the sister, sister train rolling. The dad from sister, sister was in this movie. Uh, one of the sister, sisters, uh, <laughs> Tia, Tia, yeah. uh, Tia's lifetime. Tamara's uh, homework. Is that what's, uh, how I think that's how it works. I, yeah. think, I think they're, they both do both. Cause, uh, she was in gingerbread Christmas. That's right. Didn't they announce like uh, uh, one of them was going to be a, a home and family correspondent, and then like a, a day later they canceled home right. and family? <laughs> Whoops! That's what did it, I guess. And yeah. for, for those of you keeping notes at home, uh, Alonzo did say Tim Reed's name earlier in WKRP Cincinnati. Brand and I have insisted on saying the, <laughs> the dad, dad from sister, from sister sister, sister yes. just to this show is you the that generation. Gap. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, we're not talking about One Tree Hill. We're not monsters. When he said it's sister, sister. When he said Tim Reed, did you know who he was talking about? No. I, <laughs> but I, you know what? When he, what's the W? WKRP Cincinnati. Yes. Yep. I, I did in some world know that he was on that show. So somewhere in, in the back of my mind, at some point, I, I knew he's that. He's still got a ton of charisma. He's almost 80 years old, and he's still yeah. like, he was fun to watch. I thought it was lovely. Yeah. And he was on a great, great show called Frank's Place, which has unfortunately never been released on DVD. It was like a one-season show that he and his wife, Daphne, uh, uh, were on. And it's like, it's considered as a sort of like landmark of black television, but you can't see it. There's some weird wow. like music rights or whatever. But, I you know, hate if it you when can, things if you aren't find on DVD. It, I know. Well, or streaming or anything, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't find a VHS, nothing. Nothing. Not a Betamax. It's crazy out here. <laughs> Alonzo. Uh, do, do you want to give us any words of wisdom, or do you just want to be done with us Bob. forever? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I can't run away from this one fast enough. No, uh, I just want to say that there is, there are genuinely uh, uh, charities that deal with uh, homeless veterans, which is a, a, a real issue, particularly among uh, veterans of color, and so, like, they need that more than a toy drive, so find uh, one in your area and support. Excellent, one hundred percent agree. I know, toy drives are great though. They're a little dull. Are, they're a little dull. They're, they're a little. Drives. They're a little boring. They are boring. Yeah, they're yeah, boring. Are, we could pep that. it up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe put a little something in the punch bowl. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can both end. You never know. <laughs> why? Why you gotta? Why? Why? We'll be back next week. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 
Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.